Well, welcome to the men's draw for the Tokyo 2020 Olympic football tournament. My name is Michael Zapponi and uh, we're joined by the coach of the Oli Roos and the Australian men's national team coach, Graham Arnold. Uh, Arnie, thanks for joining us as well as Tony Vidmar and Rene Muhlenstein, the assistant coaches for the Oli Roos and the Socceroos. Uh, Arnie, you must be pretty excited about uh, what's around the corner for the Oli Roos, the first time since Australia's qualified since 2008. Yeah, as happens, it's uh, obviously an exciting time with uh, <clears throat> Tokyo coming up in front of us. And, uh, you know, it's been a long wait since we qualified uh, January uh, last year in Thailand. And I know that the players are working hard individually at the clubs and, and we're all ready for it to go. And just uh, waiting for the draw has given me so much excitement to get back on the field. It was a tough qualification uh, period for you. And uh, there was a, a huge tournament in Thailand. At, which was uh, very difficult to, to navigate. Um, just 16 teams in the Olympic football tournament, I suppose, highlights how difficult it is to make it to Tokyo. Yeah, look, I, I, I've got to give a lot of praise to the staff and, and, and the players. The players uh, came into Thailand with a, a truly fantastic attitude. From the day that uh, we took over in 2018 and we wanted to grow the depth of the Socceroo squad with this Olympic team, we, we drove the players... Uh, about how important qualification was for their, not only for, you know, the game of football in Australia, but also for the individual uh, and their careers. And uh, the players really bought into that. They, they came to Thailand with a, a fantastic attitude. And when you look at, you know, we had to play six games in, in pretty much 18 days, every three days uh, in pretty hot conditions. And the boys did a fantastic job. Rene, uh, you're, you've been on this journey as well and you, you know how difficult it is for, for a team like Australia, a country like Australia, to qualify. In Europe, um, there are some big nations that have uh, qualified for this tournament. Uh, Australia could draw the likes of Germany or Spain, uh, Brazil and Argentina as well. Um, talk to us a little bit about the, uh, the importance of, uh, of this tournament from your point of view. I think it's a it's a fantastic platform uh, for young players. I think besides the World Cup, it's probably the biggest, the other, the other biggest uh, football tournament tournament out there. And uh, a lot of players that have played in in the Olympic tournament and, and have done well have gone on to have fantastic careers, uh, you know, in in Europe or, or big clubs elsewhere. So it is it is it is very important. And if you look at the history of it, I think really the South American clubs. Uh, also, uh, the, the, the countries like like Germany, like Spain, uh, and uh, and France, they find it very, very important to qualify for those such uh, such a tournaments. And uh, Tony, you had experience, of course, in nineteen ninety two, a fantastic effort by your group, uh, the best ever performance by an Australian Olympic team uh, at Barcelona, making it through to the bronze medal playoff. Tell us about that experience and and what it did for your career. Yeah, it was um, an, an unbelievable tournament. Um, you know, we had a, a fairly a fairly big build-up and, and difficult games along the way, but to uh, to go into the tournament and you played, uh, we played Ghana, Mexico, Sweden, uh, Ghana uh, on, on two times. So that exposure for for us at that level, uh, that tournament being the first under twenty three tournament. It was a uh, was a massive springboard to uh, to national team representatives, and uh, I'd been already a year in the national team, but uh, that tournament really uh, set myself on a uh, on a on a fantastic journey, and that was a a big part of uh, uh, learning uh, and in uh, international football and a bronze medal playoff. Tell us about that. Yeah, we uh, we came up against a uh, well. Uh, a semi-final against Poland, and uh, we were outclassed. Uh, but then also had the opportunity to uh, to go for the third and fourth playoff against Ghana, and again, you know, quality opposition. Uh, but uh, yeah, disappointed that we couldn't get it. But uh, we uh, uh, we we did ourselves proud there. All right, the draw is commencing now. So in pot one, Japan, Brazil, Argentina, and Korea Republic. Australia, of course, uh, in pot four. Arnie, when you look at the opponents here. Um, it, there are no easy ones. We, we have 16 nations, as I said, uh, much smaller group than, uh, than other tournaments like a World Cup. Yeah, look, and uh, I've had some experiences in 88 as a player. Uh, 
2004 as an assistant, in 2008 as a head coach. And, you know, you see some unbelievable players in 2008. You know, you're talking Argentine side with Lionel Messi, De Maria, uh, Mascherano. And that's how important this age group is. And the teams are fantastic. You will see out of this um, Olympics, the <clears throat> next golden generation of many other teams in in. In the Argentine team in 2007, uh, 2008, sorry, in Beijing, uh, uh, 10 out of the, 10 of the starting 11 played at the World Cup final. So it just shows you for Argentina how strong it is. And you talk about the, the talent pool. And when we look at Australia's campaign, obviously things have changed significantly since you went through that qualification period. A lot more players uh, have been playing a lot of football in in the A League and uh, around the world. How much of an advantage is that for us as a nation? And uh, I suppose it makes your job a little bit more difficult in choosing the squad, but a good problem to have. Yeah, look, it's it's fantastic. You know, we've got uh, a good uh, 50, 60 players to 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 look at at this moment, and uh, there's an important camp uh, coming up. The, the preparation that we've got, we will, uh, we've got it right and we're ready. Um, of course, we've got to do the Socceroos before that in June. But uh, after that, it's, uh, it's all systems go. And it's going to be tough to pick a squad because we've got uh, some great uh, uh, credentials. Okay, the draw uh, has commenced. Uh, as I said, uh, Australia in uh, pot four. And um, at the moment, uh, teams drawn... Uh, countries drawn are Japan, Korea, Republic, and Argentina. Uh, and uh, the, the draw does uh, progress. Uh, Australia yet to be drawn. Spain have been drawn out? They're going into Argentina. Okay. That's going yeah, to be our group. Yep. Yep. We're going to be in Group yeah. C. No, well, it's either that or D. We can't yeah. get in A or B. By the looks of it. Okay. Germany in D. Yes. C1. This is us. Egypt, oh, Egypt there. Okay, we need uh, pot, f so we're not going to get New Zealand. We're getting Ivory Coast. Good, is going to be in D3. We've either got Egypt, Spain, Argentina, or Brazil, Germany, Ivory Coast. All right, so this is pot four. This is four. where the Australian team will be drawn yes. from. Let's see the first nation drawn out of pot four for Australia. And Come on. Australia. So. Australia, the first team drawn out of pot four, Graham Arnold. The group three features Egypt, Spain, Argentina. Group D, Brazil, Germany and Cote d'Ivoire. Let's see where Australia will be drawn for the Olympic football tournament, Tokyo 2020. C4. C4. And Australia will be playing in group C with Egypt, Egypt. Spain, Argentina and Australia. Graham Arnold, your first reaction to the draw. Fantastic. Bring it on. Can't wait. I hope Egypt bring Mohamed Salah. We're ready. Spain, Argentina. Brings back memories. 2004 Olympics, we played Argentina in Greece. 2008, we played Argentina in Beijing. And again, we get Argentina. Great. Fantastic. Rene, uh there's no easy groups in this tournament, but uh, you must be looking forward to working with uh, Graham and Tony against uh, Argentina, Spain and Egypt. Uh, absolutely. We, we've had already two successful qualification campaigns and this is where we want to be. This is where we where especially myself, I wanted to be, I've never experienced the Olympics. Um, we all know it will have a bit of a, a different uh, outlook because of the, the pandemic and everything, but um, you look at all those groups, very, very strong teams. Um, yeah, fantastic. Bring it on. Tony, over your career, um, I'm sure you've played against most of those nations. Yeah, uh, the, uh, Egypt's the only team that I uh, haven't come across. So, uh, and I'm sure it's a, uh, it's a quality uh, lineup. But uh, yeah, fantastic group. And, and this is what uh, I think uh, the, the coaching staff would, uh, would like to, to come up against and, and really test our boys and... Uh, uh, look, I think the excitement's uh, already uh, started again. Graham, when you look at those nations, you, you touched on Mohamed Salah and uh, the potential of you know coming up against a player like that. We, we don't know which squads will be chosen, which overage players will be chosen, but uh, 
it, it's exciting to to think of the prospect of <coughs> those players uh, being pitted against your team. Oh, look, it's fantastic, and uh, you know we 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 will go to the Olympics with a, a great energy, great attitude. You know, it's a it's a different. It will be a different uh, Olympics than in the past in to in, in in Tokyo, but you know we will we will be ready, and uh, I look forward so much to playing the against those type of nations and. As I said, it's a it's a wonderful experience for our boys and one that we're very confident in being successful at. Tell us a little bit about what happens between now and the Tokyo Games and, and your preparation. Yeah, look, uh, at, 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 a, at the start of June, um, the overseas-based Olyroo boys will be given a chance and there will be a camp, uh, there will be a tournament that they play in, either in Toulon or somewhere else, uh, depending on, on the COVID restrictions and, and the cases. So they will be given the chance here. Uh, the boys uh, here in the A-League will stay and play and finish the A-League season out. All the clubs uh, uh, will release the players for us uh, by June 30. Uh, so the boys can be in Tokyo for July 1. We'll have a good three and a half weeks preparation over in Tokyo where we'll have four friendly games and be ready for that first game. And uh, Rene, just your involvement in, in Europe and, and what happens over there, how important is, is that preparation for you well it's it's massive see the COVID restrictions have really put a spanner in the works because it's been very difficult for for myself to go and travel anywhere and meet those players so we've had a lot of conversations over the phone we had a few zoom meetings as, as well with with Arnie there as well to the players so that all the players I speak to are so so excited to be part of this and and all those overseas players are very keen to get involved in that, you know, uh, camp that we're going to organise, and then hopefully, you know, get themselves a ticket to Tokyo. So, uh, and I think we've got some really, really good prospects abroad who play for big clubs who have got great experiences, where they already had some minutes with the first team, playing and training with first team players, players at Southampton, you know, at Fulham, at Everton, you know, and they and they bring that experience um, back to the Olympic team. Exciting times, guys! Eh? Finally, we're back. That's it. Let's get it. Let's get the show on the road. <laughs>